Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a closer look at the phase response in an RL circuit. Now I know we've touched upon that before a couple videos ago, but I want to show you why it can be so confusing if we don't look at it the right way. First of all, in the transfer function, we have an indication as to the magnitude of the output voltage over the source voltage. And when we have an RL circuit, if the frequency is very low, then notice we have virtually no output voltage versus input voltage. That's because inductors only respond to a change in the current. And if the change in the current is really, really slow, there's virtually no opposition to the current flow. And so therefore no output voltage across the inductor. As the frequency increases, then the inductor has a bigger opposition to that increasing a change in the current, therefore the voltage drop increases across the output voltage. You can see that the transfer function goes from zero to one when the, um, when the frequency reaches a very high value. Now when we take a look at the phase response angle, notice at very low frequencies down to zero, we have a 90 degree phase difference between the output voltage and the input voltage. And when the frequency goes really high, we have virtually no phase difference between them. Remember, the phase response indicates the difference in, phase, in the phase between the output voltage compared to the input voltage. Now let's compare that to the phase angle that we're used to when we're looking at the reactance, the impedance, and the resistance in an RL circuit. Now notice that the phase angle here is the angle between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage uh, across the impedance, the whole circuit, the resistor and the inductor combined. Notice as the reactance increases, as the reactance becomes a greater portion of the impedance, the phase angle increases. And in the end, when the reactance is really, really high and the resistance is relatively very small, and of course that happens at very high frequencies, at very high frequencies, the reactance becomes really small, uh, really big, then the phase angle between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across both the resistor and the inductor, that phase angle goes to 90 degrees as the reactance across the inductor becomes very high. So the phase angle here increases with increasing omega, with increasing frequency. But that phase angle indicates the difference between the current in the circuit, which is in phase with the voltage across the resistor, and the current uh, and the voltage across the circuit. So in other words, there is a phase difference between the current and the voltage. And that's the phase angle we're looking at here. That's very different from the phase response when we have a transfer function. There the phase response or the phase difference is the difference in phase between the output voltage and the input voltage. That's a very different kind of phase angle. And notice the phase response angle decreases with increasing, and I'm missing a G there, increasing omega with increasing frequency. So let's take a look again at what that means. This means that if this changes very slowly, so as soon as the voltage goes past zero and begins to increase, there's an immediate response on the output voltage. And so you can see that the phase angle would be 90 degrees. In other words, this will reach its maximum voltage across the output as the voltage here has barely begun to increase. There's therefore a 90 degree difference. If the frequency begins to go really fast, then notice that this will reach its maximum, maximum voltage much more quickly and follow very closely behind the output voltage here. So the difference in the phase between the source voltage and the output voltage diminishes as the frequency increases. Again, this will respond immediately to a change in the current, but the current will change so quickly that the, that the, the uh, voltage from the source will reach its maximum very soon after the voltage across the output will reach its maximum. And that's why the phase angle decreases with an increasing frequency. And again, very different from the phase angle we talked about before when we talk about the impedance and the reactance of an RL circuit. Hopefully that clarifies you. Once you understand the difference between the meaning on the phase response and what that angle means here, simply means the difference between the output voltage and the input voltage versus the phase angle here, which is different between the current and the voltage in the circuit. Very different phase angles. Don't confuse the two. And it'll make a lot more sense when we talk about the transfer functions and the phase response in an RL circuit. And that is how it's done.